Patriots. All right. For more on this story, let's go out to South Carolina. Uh, also, we'll talk about her victory last night in the primary. Uh, it's an exciting time for her. South Carolina GOP Congresswoman and primary winner Nancy Mace. Uh, Congresswoman, welcome. Good morning. Good morning, and I'll tell you, if you want barbecue on Sullivan's Island, go to Home Team. If you want pizza, go to Obstinant Daughter, and you're right, Post has okay. a great burger. It's okay. true. Great burger. It's true. All right, great. I cannot wait Thank to... Thank you very much for the dining <laughs> Right now, right Nancy, now we're landlocked. Nancy, they're going to love you're us all there. We're sending, down here. we're sending everyone there. <laughs> Traffic's already bad. Right. So, Congressman, <laughs> congratulations on the primary. Yeah. When, when the president targeted, uh, targeted your race, former president targeted your race, a lot of people thought you were going to be in trouble. Why do you think you prevailed? Well, it shows that hard work, honesty, sticking true to your principles and your values, and hustling. Uh, we pulled out a win last night. It was decisive by eight points. It's, it was an exciting night, but it just proved you can have this dream, you can set some goals, you can work hard, and you can achieve it no matter what. And that's something the that Citadel taught me was overcoming obstacles, overcoming challenges, overcoming any adversity that's been thrown my way in life. I've had a lot of second chances and I've learned from those second chances and it was an awesome night last night. Yeah, that's that was a big deal when you're the first woman to graduate from the Citadel and that was such a huge story for South Carolinians because it is a public school. They only allowed men to, to graduate or to be um, to go to school there. And then they changed that law, obviously, because uh, they were discriminating against women. So congratulations on that. What, what was your reaction when Trump backed uh, Katie Arrington, but then he tweeted out on his, or not tweeted, on his social media uh, platform, he said she ran a good race, but he congratulated you. And he said that you would easily be able to defeat the Democratic opponent. Well, it's an important message, right? We want to get an overwhelming majority in November, and that means we all have to unite behind every single Republican nominee that won last night. And I don't think it's going to be as easy as Republicans think. I, I represent a swing district. I know how hard it is to keep these seats in Republican hands. It's not easy, and it takes a lot of work, but it takes unity once you become the nominee. And that's something I worked on in 2020. It's something we're going to be working on starting today, making sure that everyone knows they're welcome in our campaign. We want their help. We want their support. And we're going to earn that support by working hard once again in November. Sure. Congresswoman uh, Griff Jenkins, our reporter from D.C., just referred to a tweet that uh, Elon Musk put out where he congratulated the woman that he voted for down in Texas. She won, became the first Mexican-born congressman, congresswoman. Um, he also tagged that with, uh, he predicts a big red wave this year, massive red wave in 2022. I know you would benefit from that, but when you look at all the data, it seems to support what he's going for. It does. It, I mean, it really, truly does. When you look at inflation, double-digit inflation over the last 90 days, when you look at the cost of gas and the cost of rising cost of gas is going to increase grocery store prices, which are already record high. Uh, you look at what's happening with rates probably today in the housing market. You look at what's going on at the border. You looked at how we exited Afghanistan. And it's been a disaster in Joe Biden's administration in just the first year and a half. And you're going to see a lot of voters, particularly independents and moderates, crossing over and voting for Republicans. And I'm really excited about that. I'm excited mm -hmm. about talking about the issues and providing solutions to so many problems our nation is facing. All right, uh, Congressman, uh, with your primary victory yesterday, uh, you, of course, you know what happened in the House. Uh, you still have a full-time job, regardless of how that came out. For some reason, there was about a two-week delay after the Senate sent over on a hundred-to-nothing vote a need for emergency protection for Supreme Court justices. Nancy Pelosi says, I want everyone covered. I want the clerks covered. I want all judges covered. Finally, they realized it wasn't practical, and it went to a vote yesterday. 27 Democrats voted against protecting our Supreme Court justices, while about four or five of them have protests raging at their house, and a would-be assassin showed up there less than a week ago in front of Kavanaugh's house. What about those 27 that said, let's not support this? It's insane, but it's also probably the same 27 that want to defund the police. But it's unbelievable that they did not want to protect the third branch of government, the judicial branch. And it's, it's illegal, actually, to show up at the justices' homes and protest. And then, as you said, someone who uh, showed up last week into Justice Kavanaugh's home trying to assassinate him was armed uh, and dangerous. This is not where we should be going in this country. We've had a lot of violence over the last two years by Antifa and ar anarchists. And you've <clears> seen uh, Chuck Schumer and others ranty up the rhetoric and encourage this sort of thing. You have a president who will not uh, 
tamp it down. And it's a huge issue, but we've got to make sure that our justices are protected, that our law enforcement, not just on the right. Hill, but everywhere across the country, that they're fully funded, and they have the resources they need to keep our community safe, mm -hmm. everybody safe. Well, the security for the justice includes their immediate family, too. They're going to get 24-hour protection. You mentioned Progressive that, that voted against it. 27 Dems voted against it. And on that list, you have Cori Bush, Pramila Jayapal. You have AOC, of course. You have the Ayanna squad. Presley, Rashida Tlaib, and Maxine Waters, just to name a few. Why do you think they did that? Did they do it because everyone wasn't getting covered, or they just don't want the Supreme Court justices to be covered at all? I don't think they want the Supreme Court justices covered at all. And you talk about Cori Bush. I don't think she wants the police to have any funding. I mean, that is where they draw from their ideology, and it's just wrong. And sometimes some of these folks are just doing it to be social media influencers and get headlines and that sort of thing. And it keeps, it's making our country unsafe. It make, it's making our justices unsafe, and we can do better. But these right. are lives that we're talking about. And we saw what happened to Brett, I mean, to, um, right, in Brett Kavanaugh's neighborhood. This guy came with a Glock and with all this stuff to potentially hurt him. No, it's scary, too. As you all know, last summer I had someone come into my, onto my property, right. yeah. onto my home. Last summer, spray painted it, um, and I had to look over my shoulder for months afterwards. I was so freaked out over it. Right. But this does happen, and it's and it's scary, and it's scary for their families, especially right. those like, like I do. I have two teenage kids. Um, it's not okay. We need to hold people accountable sure. for the violence that they're creating in this country. Right. And the news this morning about the would-be assassin is apparently he saw those marshals outside Kavanaugh's house called his sister, and she talked him into calling 911, which he did. Uh, before you go, uh, you mentioned mortgage rates a moment ago. I know you've got a background in commercial real estate. When You know, a lot of people, the American dream is to own a home. 30-year uh, mortgage rate surged to 6.2%. It was 5.5% just a week ago. It went all, up almost a point in a week. What's going to happen to the American dream? Well, it's crazy right now, too. Uh, the housing market obviously is cooling off, and that will continue to cool off as interest rates go up. We haven't seen this kind of thing in a very long time. And you look at inflation, inflation is a secret form of taxation on the mm -hmm. American people, and you're seeing it right. everywhere that they go. And then we have the Federal Reserve, which has its own issues. They are printing more money, trillions of dollars, over $4 trillion last year, over $4 trillion a year before that. And this is having a huge impact. And then you add on the supply chain issues that started during COVID-19, added on to when, when Russia invaded Ukraine. Um, and it's a scary time right. right now, and wages are not keeping up with inflation. And we're going to continue to see American families and American workers struggle. So just real quick, uh, just on the Donald Trump thing, you voted with him almost every step of the way over the course of four years. You fractured over January 6th in a comment you made. But the fact that he mentioned you in a statement uh, shows I perhaps um, in Trump world, maybe I'll meet you halfway. Would you reach out? Because I know Nikki Haley helped fuel your, uh, your re-election. It's not there yet, but your nomination again to get re-elected. Will you reach out to, to the pro former president? I, I, first of all, I want to thank you for, for mentioning Nikki Haley. She's a resident here and a constituent and a voter, and she's been campaigning with us over the last two days. She's been a good friend, a good mentor, and a great leader for the state of South Carolina and our nation, quite frankly. I am willing to work with anyone who's willing to work with me, and I welcome the former president's comments last night and everyone across the political spectrum who supported our campaign and who will support it going forward for November because Republicans have to unite if we're going to get a majority. And I know that better than anyone because I'm sitting in a swing district right now here in Charleston, South yeah. Carolina, as do all the Republicans sitting in swing districts. We're going to work hard and fight hard for November. Yeah, and Tim Scott's in that area, too, our senator from South Carolina, running unopposed. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations on your engagement and on your win. Thank you. You're welcome. And giving us some places to eat at when yeah, we're down in right. that road. That's right.